These chimpanzees are beautiful creatures. They possess a variety of skills and cognitive abilities that many animals do not have. Humans and chimpanzees share 85 to 95 percent of the same DNA and are biologically more related to humans than they are to gorillas. Throughout these past months I have done extensive research and have gotten data on the communication and cognitive abilities in chimpanzees. The results that I have acquired are very intriguing and I would like to share them with you all. For the first article I found some pretty unique findings in captive chimpanzees. The research I studied focuses on the referential gestures, communication, in male chimpanzees in Uganda. The referential gestures used by the chimpanzees was them scratching a specific spot on their body so their grooming partner would groom the directed scratched area for them. In the short term the chimpanzees would request grooming from human researchers by scratching a designated area on their body. One of the ways the chimps tried to attract the attention of their groomers was to make loud and exaggerated noises. The chimps would do it promptly so their grooming partners can see them. The grooming bouts were recorded a total of 249 times with several chimps, not specified, while the groomer was grooming the groom also known as the signaler. The groomer stopped and groomed the scratched spot that the chimp was scratching. This happened 64% of the total bouts. In 59 cases 32% the groomer continued to groom the signaler without being signified by the scratching gesture. The gestures were generating more positive and negative responses. In the majority of the total cases the groomers groomed the indicated sports. The studies and experiments done by these researchers were very extensive and well organized. Although the findings show that the majority of the total cases were positive to the original hypothesis it's difficult to exactly prove that most wild chimpanzees are able to use referential gestures. For my second chosen article the primary goal for it was is test the unprompted imitative presentations in chimpanzees. Neonatal imitation is the imitation or matching of facial gestures in newborn infants. These chimpanzees range from 7 to 15 days old. The experiment consisted of four chimpanzee babies from ages 7 to 15 days old were tested for neonatal imitation. Four of the infants were tested in the same place and one other was tested in a separate place. The first aim is to test imitation in a face-to-face -face social interaction. The second aim is to see the imitative procedure in a paradigm that is not structured. Procedure first paradigm structured, the monkeys were placed in an incubator with a human demonstrator. There was a timer to record all of the actions being displayed. Before the demonstrators worked with the monkeys, they were given two specific gestures to perform. The first imitation gesture was mouth opening and the second was tongue protrusion. Mouth opening would be the first imitation, and sometimes it would be vice versa. Each demonstration lasted 20 seconds. The second communicative paradigm was a communicative paradigm. The chimpanzee infants were prompted onto a beanbag chair. In the second paradigm three paradigms were used these were, mouth openings, tongue protrusions and mouth clicks. The match clicks consisted of three rhythmic clicks. The demonstrator was given three of the random actions to use. Once the demonstrator GR of the imitations the examiner, monkey, was given five seconds to give a response. If the examiner copied the actions this was considered to be his response. Results in the structured diagram four of the five infant chimpanzees demonstrated more mouth openings than the commutative diagram. In the communicative program when the demonstrator performed tongue protrusions the chimpanzee infants responded and imitated the action 60% of the time. When the demonstrator performed mouth openings 100%. When tongue clicks were demonstrated to the infants, two of the chimpanzees reproduced the sound 75% of the time. In the third article I reviewed scientist Anna Roberts decides to examine wild African chimpanzees in an ecologist fashion to establish a collection of gestures and to closely examine gesture production, use and comprehension. In these wild African captive chimpanzees. In this experiment Roberts was able to find 120 distinct gesture types that consisted of 65 manual gestures and 55 bodily gestures. The bodily and manual gestures were both used intentionally by the monkeys to attain and acquire different goals and milestones. Bodily and manual gestures both differed from each other therefore a different form of behavioral applicability in trying to achieve their goals. Many bodily gestures involve some sort of facial expressions or head movements. The current study of this article is to examine bodily and manual gestures in relation to the four defining features of gestural communication. Repertoire, intentionally in production, usage and comprehension. Procedure, first Roberts compares the collection of gesture size amongst the adult chimpanzees by comparing the gestural repertoire amongst the chimp individuals. Second Roberts and the scientist examine the intentionality of the gestures which is very crucial in conducting proper analysis. They also do this to decide a clear distinction between manual and bodily gestures. If one of the gestures was used more frequently than the other, manual for example, then the scientist would expect the manual gestures to be used to influence the recipient more than bodily gestures. Qualitative ad libitum samples were used to set up an inventory of gestures. The inventory of 